Today we're going to talk about how to compare and order rational numbers. In rational numbers you have whole numbers, decimals, integers, and fractions. They're all rational numbers because each one of those can be written as a fraction. The MLB keeps statistics on for each professional baseball player. Their statistics determine these players' salary and playing time. The more you produce, the more you earn and play. If you were looking for Mr. Joe, he gave up his professional baseball career after a hand injury to be your math teacher. While he was swatting at a mosquito, he accidentally broke his hand against the wall. The sacrifice he made against you. I know. So we have all these fractions and decimal. In order to put them in order, you can turn them all into fractions. But I think it's easier to turn all of these into decimals. Decimals are easier to work with. So we, Jose Otuve, his baseball average is 29 hundredths. Jesus Guzman, this is a fraction. I need to turn it to a hundredths place or out of a hundredths place. So I multiply by 4, so it's 28 hundredths or 0 and 28 hundredths. Jason Castro is 0 and 21 hundredths. Carlos Corporan, I need to turn it into a decimal in the hundredths place. So I multiply by 2, that's 26 hundredths, or 0 and 26 hundredths. That's another way to write that this is a decimal equivalency of this fraction. Matt Dominguez is 1 fourth. I could do out of 100. Or another way you can think about it is I have one whole. I break up into four parts. Each part would be 25 hundredths. And the last one is 6 25th. I want to turn that to a hundredths place. I multiply by 4. That would be 24 hundredths or 0 and 24 hundredths. Rank the player from greatest to least. The greatest baseball player according to the statistics is Jose Jesus. It's 28. 2600 is Carlos. 25 is Matt Dexter. Is 24 and Jason is last with 21 hundredths. So let's compare a couple of stuff. So we have fractions and decimal. Let's start with the positive in the numbers first. We have one third and zero and three tenths. You know, what? I'm going to add annex a placeholder here. So that's really zero and thirty hundredths. Let's go to one third. What is the decimal equivalency of this? If I have one part or one whole, and I one whole, and I want to divide it into three equal parts, what would each decimal? Hmm. You know, I'll divide. So one whole can be written as one dollar. Can three go into one? No. Can three go into ten? Three times. Remainder is one. Bring down to zero. Can three go into ten? Three times. Hold up. This is a repeating. That's why I had to write a repeating bar notation. So which one is greater? Um, th one third is greater than zero and three tenths. Let's see if I did it correctly. Yay. Let's do another positive number. Ugh, what did I just do? All right, let's do, um, let's do, oh, well, let's do this one. If one third is 33 hundredths, two third is a second part of it, so one thirty-three, thirty-three. I think it's going to be sixty-six hundredths with a repeating bar. And it's a placeholder for zero and seven tenths, so it's really seventy hundredths. So which one is greater, sixty-six hundredths or seventy hundredths? I believe seventy hundredths is greater, and it is. Let's try one more with a des. One more that are positive. Let's do, I don't know, this one. We have seven tenths. Oh, I know how to just say it. Seven tenths. Zero and seven tenths. And it's a placeholder. That's 70 hundredths. We have four fifth. Let's see. What is the decimal equivalency of four fifth? Well, I know it goes into a hundredths. That goes in times 20. Times 20, that's 80 hundredths. Or you could have done it this way. This is 7 tenths. This could be rewritten as 8 tenths. So 8 tenths or 80 hundredths is greater than 7 tenths or 70 hundredths. So, oh. All right, now let's talk about negative. How do you put negative numbers 
How do you compare negative numbers? In a number line, it goes from least to greatest. The greater numbers will go to the right than the left. So if you have decimals such as this, 0 and negative 1, and you count by hundredths place, like negative 34 hundredths, this one will be negative 82 hundredths. Which one would be greater? 0 and 34 hundredths. Because it's more to the right. It's closer to 0. It's closer to the positive numbers. So you count by 1, you reach to 34, and you had to stretch all the way to 82, negative 82 hundredths. So in negative numbers, again, the one on the right is greater. So how does that relate to what we're about to do? I'm going to keep this number line right here. And let's answer to this one right here. We have negative 22 hundredths. I think it's going to go right here. Negative 22 hundredths. So I know I count by hundred. One hundred, two hundred, eighteen hundreds, nineteen hundreds, twenty hundreds, negative twenty-one hundreds, then negative twenty-two hundreds. Let's do negative one-fourth. What is the decimal equivalency of this? If we have one whole and you want to divide it into four parts, or one dollar, you want to divide it into four parts, isn't that just twenty negative twenty-five hundredths? It is. So where would negative 25 hundredths go on this number line? Will it go before or after? Let's see. Wait, if you, let's think. If I'm counting by 1 hundredths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm counting negative, negative 8, negative 9, negative 10, negative 13, negative 20, negative 2100, negative 2200, negative 23, negative 24, negative 25. I believe it will come after. So. Which one is more to the right? Negative 22 hundredths is greater than negative 25 hundredths. And yes. Let's practice another negative one. So let's look at this one. Negative 38 hundredths. I'm going to put it right here. Negative 38 hundredths. So I had to count all the way hundredths, negative all the way to negative 38. Let's do negative two-fifths. What is the decimal equivalency of this? Hmm. Does it go into a hundredths place? It does. By 20. By 20. So that's negative 40 hundredths. Negative 40 hundredths. Where would it be on this number line? Negative 40 hundredths. So if this is negative 38, I'm counting away from zero. So it would be negative 39. Oh, negative 40 would be to the left of negative 38 hundredths. So which one is greater? Negative 38 hundredths is greater. And let's... And yes, it is. So let's go to... Oh, you can't even see that screen. Ooh, you cannot... Ooh. Ooh, these are very, very dark screens. So we have different stuff here. So let me bring it up so you can see them. And here, good. We need to put them from least to greatest. Least to greatest. Well, I know negative numbers are least, so I'm going to put the two negative numbers here. Greatest will go here. So, whoops. Let's think. 200 is a very small decimal. I think it's the least positive. Then we have 3,500s. Let's look at this one. 620. 620. What is the decimal equivalency of this? Hundreds place times 5 times 5 is 30 hundreds, or 0 and 30 hundreds. Wait, isn't 3,500 greater than 3,000? Oh, let's switch this. So. 3,500 is the greatest. It's the one on the right on the number line. Then you have 30 hundredths. Then 2 hundredths. All right, let's look at this one. Negative 1 fourth. And we, we just did this question a few seconds ago. It was negative 
25 hundredths. Negative two third. That's double one third. I know negative one third is negative 33 hundredths. So that must be negative 66 hundredths. So is this the least here? Is this farthest to the left? If zero is right here, would that be the furthest from zero? It is. So this is the order. Let's go back so you can see some. So we have this, 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 rational number, and this rational number. Which one put it from least to greatest? This is improper. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I know that's going to be probably the greatest. 8 divided by 8 is just 1. Hmm. I'll put it right here. Because I know 1 and 100 thousandth, or 1 and 1 tenth, is greater than just 1. So I'll put it right here. 13 divided by 3. Hmm. 13 divided by 3. How many 3's going through 13? 4 holes with a remainder of 1 left or 4 and 1 third. So this one is 5. This is 4 and 1 third. Alright, so, wait, this is 1 whole. It's 8 divided by 8 is 1. This is 1 and 1 hundredth. And I know 2, sorry, 1 and 100 thousandths. I know 2 and 36 hundred is greater, so this is our order. We have 1 whole, 1 and 1 tenths, or 1 and 10 hundredths, or 1 and 100 thousand, 2 and 36 hundredths. We have 4 and 1 third, which is really 4 and 33 hundredths, and 5. And yeah, we did it correct. Um, let's go to our last example. We have this, uh, this, 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 and this. Put it from least square. Well, I know the two negatives will go here. And I know the positive number will go here. Which positive do you think is the greatest? What's 18 divided by 6? 3. I'll put it right here. Because I know 3 is greater than 2 and 25 hundredths. 3 halves. How many 2's go into 3? 1 whole with a remainder of 1. So 1 and 1 half. So 1 and 1 half are 1 and 50 hundredths or 1.50 or $1.50 is less than these. So now let's look at here. Ooh, what is the decimal equivalency of 2 ninth? Can that go to a hunter's place? I don't think so. So I think what we have to do here is divide this. You have two parts, or $2. You're going to divide it into nine parts. So let's see, can nine go in two? No. Can nine go in 20? Two times. The remainder is 2, bring down to 0, and 9 going 20, 2 times. So we have 22 negative 22 hundredths. Hmm, which one is least on the number line? Who is farthest? Who would be like far away from 0? I think 20, negative 22 hundredths would be the furthest away from 0. So, we have negative 2200, which is the least, then negative 20 hundredths, then we have 1 and 1 half, which is 1 and 50 hundredths, then we have 2 and 25 hundredths, and then we have 3. So the main thing in here, if you notice, I keep on doing this, I keep turning everything, all these fractions into decimals. It makes it easier to compare than finding like the common denominator, like turning them all into a fraction. That's one, there's so many ways to do this. And then when it comes to negative numbers, the one that is farthest, farthest from zero will be the least. The one closer to zero, because it's on the right, it's, it's more to the right than these, is greater. So that's how you compare and order rational numbers.